Hey YouTube, Electric Adventures here with the next episode in Electric Adventures of the Games. Uh, we're moving on to the next game on Program Pack 4. As if there are a lot of these, I wrote about 80 games back in the day. So the last time we did Explorer, Adventure, or Pitfall, as it was. Um, the game in the middle on this pack, uh, it's a bit smaller than the others, but it's, it's called Parachute. It's still a fun game. Um, and there's another really good one. This is one of the... Uh, packs that actually sold the most. So uh, let's well, let's click in the right place to start with. Let's have a look here. Uh, yep. So upper and lower case doesn't matter, but length does. So let's load the game. So parachute. Inspiration for this one. I won't lie, was actually the Game & Watch game, Parachute. Um, and it demonstrates, you know, a fairly simple uh, game that is good fun. Um, so we have our two bits of land either side, um, and in the middle we have a boat. Let me press the trigger. There we go, here's our boat. And we have to catch the parachutes. Um, we've got a helicopter up the top. Sound has let these go. There we go, we've already sped up. Oh, ah, shark got him. So, collision detection is fairly generous. Very simple game. You notice there's a little, you know, cross up on the top left for the parachutes we lost. Very simple game, but a fun game. And we're getting faster. So I used to work in a store called Let's Play Games back in the day of all things, and. We sold game watches. Um, I used to play the game watches for people for when they were uh, not wanting to buy them. I uh, only ever owned one physical game and watch myself, which was Donkey Kong Jr. Um, only bit of trivia I used to be able to play the games upside down to demonstrate them to the customers. <laughs> and Parachute was one of the early games that was good fun and I thought it would make a great concept for a simple game. Hmm, doing better than I expected. They're really coming down fast now. Now, I will say, I mean, like, um, I think, I think the randomness of the direction changes could probably be better, but, you know, it's using um, lots of nice little sprite shapes and everything like that. And a bit of colour and everything in the background. And I even did the shark thing, which I think is pretty cool. I've like taken a couple of moves to get down to the bottom of the boat. Oh! Game over. 17,200. I think I did rather well with that. Okay, now here we are back at our good old MSX Basic. Um, and let's have a look at our listing. Let's see how long it is in total. Now we would expect this one to be a bit shorter than some of the others. It's literally Pitfall, which is one of the larger ones. Okay, it's only 30 lines long of code. And starting from then, then those lines 270 to 310, uh, so 31 lines, not 30, um, are all the sprite shapes. So that's, um, you know, there's a few nice looking sprites in that one. Let's list up to 60. Whoops. Oh dear, let's start again. Ooh. Well, we've got our normal initialization stuff, setting up our random number generator. Line 20 restores to the start of our data. Uh, set some colors, define uh, most of our variables as integers, which it gives a bit more speed and saves some memory. 
grabs our random number generator there. Line 30 clears the screen, prints the word parachute on there, draws a box around it. See that line statement there? Um, has two points, a colour and a B, meaning it draws an actual box instead of just a line. Once again, showing the power of MSX and Spectre Video Basic. Now, line 40 is a line that reads in all those sprite shapes. So there's five different ones. Um, and uh, so basically five lines, so five different sprite shapes. So basically we've got a parachutist, our boat uh, being ch chased by the shark and the two halves of the helicopter. So there are five sprite shapes. Right, so uh, line 50, um, we clear the screen again and we draw our background. So there's quite a few draw statements there. Um, and they would draw the two screen. Well, firstly, the islands on each side using sort of circles. Um, well, actually, no, sorry. The first thing draws the um, so B. The first on line fifty there, it's BF, which means background uh, box fill. So it actually draws a filled box. So that will draw our water. Um, I think the one to twenty-five there draws the little uh, white stripes on the water to give us, you know, to make it rather than just look like a patch of blue. It's got a couple white bits of white on there, so it looks like there's waves. Um, then we have a couple of circle statements, and we uh, do circles. You can't fill them while you're drawing the circles. So you've got to use the paint command, which is like a fill. And then another circle that does our two bases of our islands, and that color three is green. Um, and then we have um, some circles which are the leaves on... Oh no, no, no these are the actual um, stems of the tree, so the little circles, we just draw them up like that. And we're drawing both of the circles at the same... both of the trees at the same time there. I still can't type. 70 a um, few more circles there, and I was so drawing the, uh, the leaves on the tree as well. Um, now circles you can draw them as as part of a circle so basically like an arc and then a join so the circle command is very powerful um, as you can see by how good we got that to look with very little lines so by line 80 um, we're up to displaying the score and the high score up the top and then we put our press trigger to begin line 100 we're looking for you either pressing the space bar or the first joystick trigger Otherwise we loop around in a circle. Otherwise we go and rub out where it says press trigger to begin. Set our score to zero. Um, and it's probably a number of um, parachutes that have died. And LL is our level. Okay, next few lines. Now we get into our game proper. So 110, we're still sitting up here. We're setting our We've got an X and an X1, they're both at the same spot. So Sprite 0 uh, is probably our man. Sprite 1 and Sprite 2 would be the helicopter. So X1 is the position of the helicopter, X is the position of the hand. So I'm fairly fair here. You start with the boat and the helicopter directly um, and, uh, lined up with each other. Um, we've got a bit of an intro sound there, not that we heard that. Um, very simple. Line 120, we go and get the direction of the joystick. Um, if we get back A3, um, B, right, so we go and use the V peak command to quickly go and get the position of uh, current position of the sprite, I would say. Um, it's list. Oh, and we add 12 to it, so this is moving to the right. So this is a very fast way. And rather than using a variable, so incrementing a variable and then going and putting it where the sprite is, um, we're actually going and getting the actual position of the sprite from the sprite's um, memory position. We're using the V peak, adding 12 to it, and then quickly putting it back. So this is probably the fastest way of moving a sprite. Line 130 do the same thing for left. Uh, line 140. Um, we'll have to figure out what Z is later. But I would say, oh, all right, Z is the direction or current direction of the helicopter. So one would be right and two would be left. So line 140 moves the helicopter to the right and line 150 moves the helicopter to the left. Reversing Z, uh, so uh, if we reach the edge, um, and I'd say there's a bit of ram randomness coming up that'll make us change direction as well. Go to the next section. 
Right, so now we've got a bit of a loop here going from 3 to 8. Um, right, these are animating our current uh, parachutes, I'd say. Uh, and we've got a chance of them appearing. Yeah, they put them on the screen. And yeah, so we're actually manipulating the sprites directly rather than having variables for whether they're on the screen or not. Yeah, just checking all those. Um, and that basically drops the parachutes. And yeah, so from line 160 through to 190, that is basically what it's doing it's animating the parachutes and making ones randomly appear out of the helicopter. Just trying to see whether it. I might be wrong about whether it spawns them there. Let's have a look a little bit further. And 200 is the end of our loop. And we have a couple of little subroutines here. So uh, I'd say this is our collision detection. So when a um, parachute has reached the level of the water, we check whether uh, we're in range, our X position is within a certain range and always touching the boat. Um, so if it's within a certain tolerance, then we make the parachute just disappear, we add to our score, we increment our level. So this is our one um, non-integer value. We're just increasing it by 0.1 every time we, uh, a parachute just comes down. Apply a sound, a bit of a sound there, and 260 jump to the next thing. Whereas well, 220 looks like a different subroutine. Uh, Alright, this is our shark bit. So we've missed and we're making the shark run across the desert. But notice everything else on the screen stops while we're doing the shark thing because we're just animating the shark at this stage. Um, M is our variable for doing the mans, and if there's if we've got hit three, then it's game over. So that's that subroutine. Um, otherwise, we print game over, and we update our high score. Hit our data. Right, two fifty. Go back to line eighty, and I'd say two sixty is our little subroutine for displaying the score, which basically rubs out the letters of where the score is and then prints it back again. So, not a lot of code in this one, um, but it shows how you can make quite a nice looking um, fun game. I mean, obviously it doesn't have a supreme amount of replayability, um, but it was a good game to add as um, a filler on this title in between uh, the Pitfall clone, which is obviously a huge game, and the game that comes next, which is um, in itself uh, very popular, uh, which is called Android Alert, which, and we'll be looking at it next time. So I hope everybody's been enjoying this series. Um, I like making these videos about my original games from back in the day, um, especially to hook up to my website, so people know a bit more about these games. Um, and there's been a lot of people who keenly follow this series. All right, I'm Electric Adventures. Thanks to all my subscribers. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.